The meltdown of reactor number two at the Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station in Middletown, Pennsylvania, was the result of a catastrophic series of events that began on March 28, 1979. Precipitated by mechanical failure and exacerbated by human error, a loss of coolant accident ensued causing over half of the highly radioactive uranium core to melt and ultimately a release of radiation into the surrounding countryside. Fifteen months and 24 days after what has become known as the worst commercial nuclear power accident in U.S. history, two volunteers braved the unknown and on July 23, 1980, entered the containment building for the first time since the accident. Bill Burley, a member of that first two-man entry team, recounts the events of that day. My initial role in the, uh, in the recovery of Three Mile Island was to uh, interface with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in their assessment of what took place during, during the accident conditions. And when that role finished, uh, the plant was looking for volunteers to uh, to make the first entry into the team. And so I felt like I was in decent health. I uh, felt like that was a, a role I could uh, support. So I volunteered. And uh, they picked Mike Benson and myself to be the first entrance. The whole entry program, uh, well, the whole recovery program was, uh, was uh, managed by a guy by the name of uh, uh, Glenn Hovey. The uh, containment entry program was managed by a guy by the name of uh, Jim Langenbach. And it was very well thought out, very uh, 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 well planned from a safety perspective. Uh, we, took, we took air samples in the reactor con uh, containment building before we ever made an entry, so we had a pretty good idea of what the airborne uh, conditions were uh, in terms of oxygen, in terms of, uh, in terms of radiation. We looked at uh, uh, what the path would be when we made the entrance. We, we looked at our communication system to make sure that uh, uh, we, we could maintain adequate communications with people inside the containment and, and uh, support team outside. I went in with a, uh, uh, what they call a teledetector, which was a, a telescoping radiation detector. And they, the probe for it extended about 12 feet out in front of me. So I always knew when I made the containment entry uh, what the radiation field looked like before I, I got into it myself. We, we practiced uh, the path and the communications. It was all well practiced before we actually executed. And uh, actually the first time that we went to enter the containment, uh, we found that the door uh, had, had a problem with it that it actually couldn't be opened. There was a pin that had uh, dropped on during a uh, hydrogen detonation that had taken place during the accident. And that pin had to be drilled out of the way before the door could be opened. So we actually aborted. Uh, I went in to the containment. My role was basically to uh, map the radiation field uh, and to uh, to walk the path that was uh, designated. and. Uh, we had meeting after meeting where we laid out, you know, what I would wear. I, you know, I went in with a, with a, uh, uh, like a, 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 a diver's wetsuit on. You're basically looking at, uh, you know, four different kinds of radiation, neutron radiation, alpha, uh, beta, and gamma. Uh, you don't have to worry about neutron radiation because the reactor was shut down. We weren't generating any neutrons. Alpha radiation is basically attenuated uh, by just a layer of skin. Beta radiation would be attenuated by the wetsuit that I was wearing, and gamma radiation takes a lot to attenuate that. That basically can go through, uh, use, usually use concrete or uh, lead to be uh, 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 blockers of uh, gamma radiation. So gamma is what I would be exposed to for the most part. I had something like 85 uh, thermoluminescent decimeters on my body, you know, on my soles of my feet, on my legs, 
you know, on my, on my torso, on my head. Uh, they position them all over the place to make sure that they would then later on take those and analyze them to see how much radiation I was exposed to. Uh, I had a, an alarming dosimeter, so if I, whatever the predetermined uh, limit was that uh, I was allowed to accumulate uh, during the entry, if I hit that limit, I would be, I would abort. If I lost, we lost communication, we would abort. So we set all kinds of safety standards ahead of time as to what the conditions for aborting the entry would be. As I said, I had, I had a wetsuit on, I had a scuba air pack on, to oxygen pack on, so I had, I had breathing air, self-contained breathing air, and I had an additional uh, oxygen bottle in case the scuba system failed. Uh, I had the wetsuit, and in total I had about 85 pounds of my weight that I was carrying in, and I weighed 115 pounds at the time, so uh, <laughs> it got to a point where I had to say, hey, I'm safe enough, <laughs> we, don't, we don't really need any more. Uh, so it was very well laid out, uh, very well planned, and, and, it, and it went off just the way we expected. I opened the door, I went in, I, I uh, led the path around that we had planned to, to walk in advance. The uh, total exposure that uh, Mike and I took in the first entry was uh, 400 millimeters. And uh, in many cases during the routine maintenance of a, of a, of a reactor coolant pump or a, 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 a high intensity maintenance item inside the containment, uh, maintenance people would be uh, uh, susceptible to that much radiation. In a year's time, the NRC allows you to, to be uh, exposed to 5,000 millirem, uh, 1,250 per quarter, uh, 33 month period of time. So I was well within the uh, limits of, uh, of uh, radiation exposure during the containment entry. Uh, it, it just went off as planned. You know, we went into the airlock, I opened the door, we went in, we walked the path. The only thing we saw when I was in containment that looked uh, abnormal at all was there was a hydrogen detonation the third day into the accident. The elevator door was askew and there was a, uh, a normal door that had uh, uh, been uh, forced open and it had hit a, uh, a guardrail and was, was kind of bowed around the guardrail a little bit, uh, deformed around it. There was a diamond plate that uh, separated the, uh, there was a hatch leading to the basement that had about eight feet of water in it. And there was a diamond plate that was uh, a thin metal plate that was over that hatch opening. And when I got near the basement, the, the teletector uh, really started to scream. You know, there was a huge difference in radiation exposure, so I knew not to walk there, you know, and we didn't. It was kind of eerie because it's just like you're walking into this huge uh, dome building and you're the only person in there. So, I mean, it's almost like an echo that you, that you hear. Uh, it, 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 it was just uh, a little eerie that way. As far as I was concerned, just routine is what you do. You know, it's no big deal, <laughs> but actually, I was never exposed to media in my life, and so just the media exposure was was more uh, anxiety-producing than than the actual evolution itself. 